I made a thing, and so can you. On recent videos, you've been seeing me make a push to uh, improve my castings, mostly to do with gating. Uh, you've seen me use uh, this tapered sprue former, which I frequently said isn't quite long enough. I've used uh, something that's somewhere to make a crappy surge trap, and I've used these copper pipes to make the runners. Uh, that's been working out great, but I've decided to address some other issues, and hopefully I can share this system that I've cobbled together with you folks. It involves these. This is a tapered sprue former, but this one's longer. See, two inches longer. Hopefully that'll fix my length issue. And this, this is my molded surge trap. There's a video. I'm gonna recommend you go watch a video uh, by SW Dweeb, who links a video by another guy and explains why surge traps are so important. Uh, if this looks like one that he's used recently in some of his videos, it's because I watched his videos and then just kind of straight up copy the design. I modeled both of these on Fusion. I uploaded them to My Mini Factory. I know people are uh, people are like charging money for files on My Mini Factory or whatever. Uh, these are free. Anyone with half a brain can model these up in no time flat. Uh, to prove it, I model these up in no time flat. So you can just download them for free, and they're designed to work with this kind of piping. It's one quarter inch, I believe it's quarter inch outer diameter uh, copper pipe. You can get a whole bunch of this stuff. It's, uh, uh, people use it for like connecting up like ice maker lines and water lines to the back of fridges and stuff like that. It's pretty common. You can just, it's probably at Home Depot. They sell it by the roll. They don't sell it in like the long tube things because like, look, it's, it's, it's weak. Probably don't want to hook it up to your uh, fridge though because we replace a lot of it with plastic because this crap rots from the inside out. I'm rambling. I should stop rambling. And by design to work with quarter inch tube, what I mean is the bottom of this, that, is the same kind of diameter as the tube. This, which is where the, the metal flows into the surge trap, is also the same diameter as that. And this hole on top can accept a piece of this tight in it to act as the vent when you're ramming it up. And then you can pull this out the top, or not, or it's too tight to pull it out the top, uh, and then pull this out the bottom, and have your sprue, your surge trap, and your runners molded nice and smooth without changes in diameter anywhere in the system. It's good for, uh, for reducing turbulence and all of that stuff. To show you exactly how these work, I rammed up a mock flask down here. I have to use a pretend one because the thing that I'm actually gonna cast uh, right now, I can't show you for like another month. You'll find out why in another month, but it's cool. It's pretty cool. Anyways, we're gonna use these, these old patterns, which I made in a video a long time ago for the, the keychains. And traditionally, the way I used to do this, this uh, gating system, I would have the things, right? I would have the metal flow in, not through this. I would use things like this, you know, big honking in gate, Bloop, cut from here to here, here to here, and then a big honk and out gate. So the metal would gush down this gigantic hole, go through a sloppy turbulent thing into this, and this, and then out this gigantic hole. And there would be changes in diameter of the system. The metal would just be pouring down this like a big turbulent mess, stir up all the sand, and any air or sand or any crap would have to flow into the patterns before going out a giant ridiculous hole. And this setup is very bad. You get any, any air that gets mixed in from the turbulence, any of the oxide layer that gets mixed up in the turbulence, goes right into your part. And it's bad. It's not good. It ends up with, you end up with crappy castings, sand mixed in there, inclusions, porosity, all that. And uh, it's how I cast for a long time. It's bad. So this is, you know, a straight through kind of deal. Screw those. This new system. I have my tapered sprue former. Uh, I also have the, the pouring basin on top, so I pour into a basin and then it overflows into this. That's important too, but I don't have a print to share with you regarding that step of the system at the moment. This goes in here or somewhere. Um, hmm, this is too long. My tubing cutter is in my toolbox, which is in my work truck, which is not here. Hmm. Pretend this is shorter. Say we got this going in. When you're ramming these up, I tend to push it in just a little bit to hold it although it is always kind of tippy until you get all the sand kind of piled up around it. Then you have your tube going out here. Now when you remove these, you got to kind of clean up the transition so it's nice and smooth. But the important thing is, tapered thing, 
smooth, smooth, same diameter transition versus big honking fat thing with a flat floor into this thing. You know, this is a bigger difference than this. And you can smooth out that curve later in the sand, like I've done in recent videos. So that, I tended to push, push this copper thing in halfway, and then when you ram on top, you know, you get the other half of the tube. You've seen those, you've seen that in videos. Have your tube. Recently I've been sticking this kind of on the end. Let's pretend it ends here. I've been sticking this here, so it's like a tangential thing. So it would go in and it would circle up the pipe. That's worked, but it's kind of messy because it's a big honking hole on the top and then it overflows and ruins my flasks and oh no, chaos! Now I have this. So at the end, at the end, you shove this in with this little, this little lip here lined up with the pipe. So these are both shoved in, halfway down in the sand, and then you have a very smooth transition here. Again, you're going to have to clean it up a little bit when you take the parts out, but you end up with uh, a much nicer tangential uh, swirl trap deal. The metal swirls up and you have a vent out the top, a much smaller vent. Where did my little piece of copper go? There it is, little piece. You know, when you ram it up, that can vent, that can make the vent go all the way up the top. This is kind of a weird shape. It's not just like a stretched fez shape, there's actually a reason for this, which I will get to in a second. But as you'll notice, metal goes in, metal goes around the thing, and it goes out into the spin trap. Where's the pattern come in? Well, pretend I have more of these. I can't find my tubing cutter. It's not here. The metal goes in, races around, and fills up the spin the surge trap. Where does the pattern get its metal? You make another exit from this line into your pattern. Or if you have a bunch of these, you know, you can do multiples. You can do, uh, you know, one here and then have another one coming out here into this. And that's, that's how you do it. You don't pour your initial rush of metal straight through your patterns. That's bad. You slow it down into your pattern with the tapered sprue former. It goes around your nice, smooth, even diameter I don't know if that's important, but the smoothness is important. You don't want huge changes. Uh, then it rushes into the surge trap and overflows slowly into your part. This way you don't have that rush with any sand it's taking in or any of the oxide layer bursting through your, your part. You also don't end up with uh, the turbulence mixing the air in as you pour. So when you pour it in, air gets mixed in. Imagine if you're dumping water into your glass. If your water doesn't have any air in it, I'm not talking carbonated soda or nothing, just water, there's still air bubbles mixed in, because as the water hits the bottom, it stirs up all the air. Well, that crap, when you pour into one of these, that crap gets mixed into the metal and gushed through your part. With this setup, it goes straight into this. You minimize it with the tapered sprue former, and then all the rest of the air goes in here. And it's really kind of a magically cool thing. I'll try to explain here with a marker. Okay, check this out. We're gonna do, we're gonna, here's, here's the bottom, or the side view. So you got your metal going into this thing. And here's your vent out the top. Here's the top view. With the vent out the top. Okay? Side view, top view. Metal rushes in, rushes in, and gets spun around this thing. Woo! And as it's filling up, it's not filling up, it's swirling. And it's swirling pretty quick. The metal goes in surprisingly fast. It swirls pretty quick. This acts to uh, prevent any, uh, like, like if it were hitting a wall, you would hit and some of the flow would reflect back. If you see that SWD video who links another guy's video, there's like chains of videos, he shows that with a really cool glass sided flask. That's pretty neat. But not only does that crap not get bounced back, it gets trapped in there, but the, the spinning around motion centrifuges all the metal to the outside and the air, the air that got mixed in, you know, the, the air from the pouring, remember the water description? That air gets pushed to the center, the center of the spinning action. Because the spinning, like a centrifuge, the densest crap goes to the outside. In an aluminum melt, the densest crap is the oxide, so they get stuck on the outside. The air goes to the middle, and as it fills up, the air exits first. Seriously, phone, shut up. It's two videos in a row. The air will go out the vent, and then, of course, as it fills up, the metal will go out the vent. So that's pretty cool, huh? Oxides get trapped on the outside, they don't reflect back, 
air gets to the middle, shoved out the top, and then the metal goes out the top. So this solves your air problem and your oxide problem. Cool, huh? Now remember, here's your tapered sprue. This is the above view again. Tapered sprue to slow it down. You don't have a big transition of diameters here. Metal goes in, goes through a spin trap, and overflows into your part. Here's your part. You might need a vent on your part also, and feeders and all that. Depends on the part. But this system, I've just recently been using, and it got me this great, remember this video? The great surface finish I got on that? Remember that? These are print lines. That's some great surface finish. And there's, there's sand on it, I was using it. It's worked out quite well. I'm going to continue using this system from now on. I recommend you go print these from my mini factory for free. Go to hardware store, get some quarter inch pipe. You can cut small pieces if you want, like these little offshoots. You can cut long ones of this. You know, you can make curved ones. You can kind of mix and match and reuse over time. So one roll of this should last you a long time. And the extra, you can melt or whatever. Let me know what you think. If you're overseas and you don't get quarter inch copper pipe, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what size copper pipe you can get anything similar, uh, but if you print this, you can probably scale it up or down a certain percentage, and if you scale both of them up or down a percentage, then, you know, if it fits in there, then it's the same size as this to line up with there, and it's the same size as this. Hope this helps, and uh, happy casting. Uh, return to actual casting next week, probably, uh, not the thing I'm going to cast right now, that'll be in a month, but, uh, but I've realized I don't have all the gingery lathe parts cast, and I'm trying to decide, do I cast the tailstock that I don't have, or do I just start making the rest of it and get the tailstock when I get there? I don't know. Uh, you, you leave a comment, say, cast more things, or put away the furnace and make the rest of the lathe first. You don't need a tailstock yet, stupid. Thanks for watching. Links again in the description below. The coolest part of these... They're glow in the dark. How cool is that? Oh, there it is. Turn off the light, stupid. Glow in the dark. You can even, ew, that glue looks like poop. It's not though, I promise, it's appliance glue.